to the latest in the video reviews from chroniclechamber.com. Today we're having a look at the Phantom, for those who came in late, the very first trade paperback from Fru. Um, it's appeared in December of 2017. It's available on the Fru website or in bookstores. Um, I'm, uh, this is, it's only released about a week ago. I'm lucky enough that um, Todd from Kaboom Comics has got this one in for me and uh, really looking forward to having a look at it with you. So let's have a bit of a look at this big trade paperback. When I do say big, it's quite weighty. Um, people have complained about the postage. There's a reason for that. It's quite heavy. Um, and there's a reason for that. And that's to do with the paperweight and stuff. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, first up, let's have a look at the cover. Most of you will have seen that. I really love it. It's a Jeremy McPherson original. Um, the green, I think, is what really stands out to me. And I know Thomas Mason is the colourer behind this. Uh, just the... Um, it's, it's a colour that we haven't, we don't often see on the front of a Phantom comic, and that's, uh, I guess, appropriate for having it as a Phantom book instead. Really vibrant colour. It's a simple picture, um, but in terms of it being for those who came in late and an introduction for people to find out the stories behind the legend of the Phantom, it's a really good way of going about it, I think. Um, if we flip it over and have a look at the back cover again, people will see this or, or things like this in the, as an advertisement in the back of Fruit Comics, etc. Um, I really like the black um, background and the way that that makes all of the, the writing stand out. Really vibrant um, image from each of the stories that's inside. Um, won't get spent too long over the blurb. You can read that at your leisure. Um, one interesting point to note is in the barcode, and it's not often you look at the barcode, I suppose, but um, really important to see that ISBN, um, International Standard Book Number. Um, this is the first time that Fru have ever had an ISBN. And just, I guess, as a case in point, if we have a quick look at the back of the Dead River, which is the most recent um, Fru comic to come out, you can see that they've got an ISSN which is an international standard serial number instead. So um, this is a book, and uh, I guess that's the difference for Fru. This is the first time they've ever um, produced a book as a trade paperback. Um, even the spine I really like. Um, if we have a look, uh, the Phantom for those who came in late. And it's got the little Fru at the top there, and importantly, TPV1 with the skull, but one in that Fru circle indicates, I guess, um, that we're looking forward to having many more of these afterwards. Now, I've mentioned the weight, um, and I guess by point of comparison about that, I've got the uh, the 200, 2017 annual. Now, you'll notice that the 2017 annual is 260 pages. The, uh, the trade paperback here is 212 pages, but if anything, the trade paperback is a little bit thicker, and I guess we can see that if we, we put them up. Can we do this one-handed? <laughs> uh, spine to spine, the, the trade paperback, as you can see, if anything, um, and as I run my finger over there, there's a bit of a bump. This is thicker. Um, so for it to have, what, 50-odd um, pages less, 48, 50 pages less, and yet be thicker, is indicative, again, of the pages inside. And I'm starting to give you a bit of a look at the colour that's in there. We'll have a, a closer look at that at the moment. Um, if we open it up, that, as an end paper, I love that. Um, Jamie Johnson is a um, really talented artist, and for him to feature in the end cover with an old jungle saying, um, and then the title page for those who came in late, really, uh, really stands out there. We flip it over, and we see um, Dudley's, Dudley Hogarth, the publisher, his uh, message from the publisher, or before the adventure. Um, that's pretty much word for word from the website, so you've got plenty of time to go back and have a look at that. We've got the, the cast of thousands, or about eight, who have uh, contributed to this, um, and uh, all of the, the important information there again, and that uh, um, about who they are and what they are. I love the monkey mail, I love the skull cave. Um, there. Now we've got the table of contents, and we'll go through each of these stories. We'll talk more about these stories in a podcast. Um, when we get to it, if uh, you really have come in late, you're not sure what the Chronicle Chamber podcast is, have a search on iTunes or whatever for Expand the Phantom podcast. We'll go into each of these stories in more detail when we review the book there. Um, we'll have a quick look at them here. I'm not going to spend too much time on the stories though. Okay, so um, that's, the, that's the start of the book and then we're into the comics. Um, there are seven comics, as I said there, I think seven. Seven stories. Um, we've got the splash page for each of them, which is again this really, really nice black cover, uh, back black page with the text that stands out. Each of them features a, an image from the, the story, the title, and then a bit of information about the author, the artist, where it was first published, and, and whenever it's appeared in a fru. All of these stories have appeared in a fru before, at least one, um, so that'll be interesting 
uh, but it's the first time obviously that they've been collected in colour and I've mentioned that if we flick through all of these stories in really and it's really vibrant colour, really beautiful and even I think as you can see as I flick through this the, um, the variety of artists and um, the styles through this is really interesting in itself. Um, as a point of reference, I suppose it's interesting to um, compare what this has looked like before. Um, I know some people are, are, are fans of colours, some people are fans of black and white. If I grab the 2013 annual, um, the 2013 annual was the last time that this story, for instance, the first one, first Phantom has appeared. Um, and if I have a quick look at a comparison between these two, I just juggle this with one hand. You can see here, where are we? You can see here side by side what the pages look like, colour and not colour. Now this is a bit hard to fold over because the spine's quite stiff, but um, you can have a bit of a, a, a bit of an example there of side by side, if I get my head out of the show, um, what those panels look like. And I don't think there's any doubt really that the colour is pretty impressive. So Ivan Peterson, I understand, has done a lot of the colours for this and uh, so he's done a really great job there. Um, we keep flicking through, the second story is the is Walker's Table. Interesting choice, I'm not sure that a lot of people would have picked Walker's Table to be an inclusion here. We'll discuss that on the podcast as I said. Maybe they're looking at, uh, they really wanted to make sure that we understand the heritage of the first Phantom because this story does really deal with the fact that the first Phantom's, with the first Phantom's father, etc. Um, and uh, the first Phantom's father. Um, maybe it's with an eye to the American market as well because this story is largely set around Columbus and, and exploring the continent early in the piece. So perhaps that's part of it as well. Um, Childhood of the Phantom. Now this is a really interesting one because, and we see as soon as we flick over, this is actually in uh, the landscape format um, as per some of the early frues. Um, no one's going to make a mistake and accidentally tear the spine of this one, but uh, the only possible criticism of this one is, I suppose, the size of the panels is a little bit small, um, and especially, and because of that stiffness of the spine, which I mentioned before, can be a little bit tricky to, to open that up to read, you know, whether it's the narrator's comments um, or, or, well, that's usually what it is, actually, at the bottom of the of the story there, but look, that's, that's not a really massive issue. Um... It, uh, so that's the only sort of idea there. This is the Sunday story, for those of you who are wondering. The Child of the Phantom was in Fruit number 1798, which was only released a couple of weeks ago, the wedding of the, of the Phantom anniversary. Um, this is the Sunday story, but that Child of Phantom in, the, in 1798 is the daily story. So they are, they are subtly different, and it's actually an interesting exercise to go through and be able to see the two of those. Only advertisement in the comic is for Kid Phantom, very appropriately placed, um, given that this is the childhood of the Phantom story. Alright, flick over again, so that's the origin of the 21st, now, 21st Phantom, now we have the origin of the ring. This is the first of the Egmont stories, there's two Egmont stories in this seven comic collection. Um, <coughs> the first of them, this one's by Alf Greenberg and Jamie Valve, um, I hope I've got the pronunciation right there. Um, look, this is personally not a favourite story of mine. You can see even as we as we flick through that that it's very wordy um, and it's a bit political and, and can be a little bit tricky to follow. I suppose it's, it's denser than some of the other stories but it does a fantastic job of explaining how the, the Phantom come by, came by the Skull Ring which was never really ex explained and explored by, by Lee Fork. So um, um, some, some little interesting Features of this story, and if I can find it here, it is. Um, he signed the story, The Phantom. I think that's been redone for this comic, perhaps, because even in the next panel, which Fool calls himself the Avenger. So, um, the first Phantom, I think, was known, in, or, or according to this story, was known as the Avenger before he took the name The Phantom. Uh, interesting that they've added that to the note, but not changed the rest of the the rest of the story. Anyway, um, again, the colours are, are just so magnificently done. Um, that, that frame that you could see there, that page, really quite nice, really beautiful. Again, this big, the, the big pages um, has been done really, really well throughout, and, and that's as stunning as anything, the last page. So, then we flick over the story of Hero. Um, this is from um, King Comics in uh, the 1960s from America. An interesting take on the story of Hero from Bill Harris. 
Um, it's an interesting choice for them to have included this story in the collection, and uh, we'll go into a lot of de depth about this on the podcast, I'm sure. Um, the fact that they've chosen to include this one instead of Lee Fork's origin story of Hero, which was from the Maharaja's daughter, which from memory I think was written in 1955, so, you know, a dozen years before this story came out. Um, but whether they've included it because they wanted a, um, a difference in, in artist, Maharaja's daughter is by Wilson McCoy, as was some of the other stories here. Um, or whether they've included it for the length, because this version of the origin of Hero is much shorter than Maharaja's daughter. I'm not sure, but uh, either way, look, the basic premise of the story is the same, that um, the, the Phantom received Hero as a gift from a grateful regent whose daughter had been saved by the Phantom. Now, this is when we move into, whoops, the two signs, um, or the, sorry, what do they call it here? The two signs, it's called Carlisle's Goodmark. In previous frues, it's called the two signs on the front here, um, and it's about the two, I guess, the good mark. It's the first story that really featured the good mark and explained what that was about. We don't find out where the ring came from, or where the uh, the, the the mark came from, but it is a, a very nice um, Lee Fork story. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we we looked at that example before of uh, the differences between the two stories. Now, as luck would have it. Carl's, Carlisle's Goodmark was also published in uh, that 2013 annual. So we can again get a really clear comparison of the two stories side by side. And I think what you'll notice straight away here is the size of the panels. Is a, it's a really interesting. Back here in 2013 and every other fru that they've produced, the panels are much, much smaller. And you can see there that we've only got, what, five panels on this page. Uh, what is that? Like quick count. Uh, six, nine on the other. So um, much bigger panels. Um, and so it's not just the colour that's different, but it is also the size of the panels. And for those of you who have read these stories before, it, it really is pretty cool to, to see them bigger again. Uh, the last story as we get to it is Devil's Story. And this is the second of the Egmont stories, which I sort of alluded to before. Um, I like this one heaps better than I like the other one, to be honest. This is a really good story. Which I guess Lee uses Lee Fork's structure of a, uh, you know, and, and again, I'm not going to, to go into it too much now, but um, the colouring, the presentation of it is really cool and um, telling the story of how the Phantom came, a, came upon Devil as his, uh, as his companion is, uh, is really well done. And from all reports, this story was so well liked by Fork himself back in 77 when it was written that he adapted this, uh, this into his understanding or his canon, I suppose, of where the devil came from. And then we get to the last page, and again, that Jamie Johnson image with another old jungle saying. So look, what a beautifully put together book. Um, it is an absolute must have as far as I'm concerned, and uh, as far as you should be concerned in terms of um, fandom stories and for your fandom collector. Great gift for someone who hasn't um, come into the fandom before, for them to get to understand the character and the stories behind it. You should definitely get this from Fru's website or go down and see your local comic book store. It won't be in newsagents, so you're going to have to make sure that you hassle your local comic book store owner or, the, or your local bookshop and get your copy of The Phantom for those who came in late. And we all look forward to seeing Fru's next trade paperback as well. All right, thanks very much for watching this, and I hope you got a little bit of something out of it. I hope you saw that it really is worth the $25 cover price, and uh, you should pick yourself one up as soon as you possibly can. All right, until next time, everybody, happy phantoming.